this is like a very let's say um relaxed uh, conversation chat about <laughs> initially about comedy as you are a comedian and yeah. uh, pro promoter i guess i as far as i know yes both of those yeah. things yeah so basically uh just uh, about it could be about anything let's say I'm not going to grill you, you know, like like try to, you know, try to let's say in, in, interrogate you, you know, yeah. about uh, your personal life or something. It's just like, just just let's say some questions about comedy. Let's say, you know, maybe uh, you have some stories to tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'm sure it will. I've lived a bit, yeah. It will be, you know, it will be interesting. Uh, obviously, this is a new idea. I've done some. Um, uh, podcast like live podcast you know let's say before the show uh i you know i i've met uh let's say i meet uh um you know um a comedian just uh, record it like live but you know i think the the good thing about skype is actually that um there's no no like this when you record in life it, there's always you know noise in the background like people chatting because it's pub you know when you record on on on, on when you record on skype it's more like clean more clean and you know and it's like it's it's more let's say podcast friendly Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I, I done one on Skype a couple of weeks ago, and uh, and and I, I thought I, I, it went really well. But I um I, I I unloaded it because my phone's pretty much full of apps. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. I see. So so it's like everyone probably is asking you to to download something, you know. And there's another guy, uh, Peter Balkus, who is pretending that he, uh, I mean, pretending that he wants to um, do a podcast with you. And the only reason he 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 got in touch. Is to make you download another app. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to unload it again when when I finish with you. But <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see. I mean, after the you know after our um, uh, conversation, you can do whatever you want with Skype. You can. <laughs> right. you can even, yeah, you can even keep it if you if you if you want. Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, if you don't mind, like uh, introducing yourself, maybe. Obviously, I haven't done any research on you. Obviously, we are we are Facebook friends. It doesn't mean we are friends. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I, I've never had three thousand friend, friends in my life. I see. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah i mean uh are you have, how long have been have you been doing comedy for well i um i started messing around i started messing around with it 20 years ago as uh, um and i invented the name bob walshy walsh which is uh, a very original name considering my real name is bob walsh oh wow um, that's that's um, smart yeah I, i just i don't know why i did it but it, i've been doing it so long now as bob walshy walsh that it, it, it would be silly to change it because all the good work i've done and the bad work um, yeah. It would be wasted then, wouldn't it, if I if I changed my stage name? So, yeah, 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 yeah. True, and it's, um, it's very yeah. catchy, very catchy. Anyway, two thousand and let me let me go back. Two thousand and four, I moved back to London to um, to get involved in my football club AFC Wimbledon and to see okay. where I could help. Um, and and I was between jobs, and so I thought that's it. I'm going back to London. And a friend of mine took over a pub in South Wimbledon, and I started a comedy club there, um, and not as an act really. I'd, I'd done a few bits as MC, and I'd, yeah. I'd introduced, uh, uh, um, I'd, I introduced a few bands before, and, and that. And so I suddenly found myself running two comedy clubs in Wimbledon, mm -hmm. and. Um, And and slowly became a comedian from there. I mean, basically, the, there was the Grove in South Wimbledon, which was quite a famous little Monday night show. It was a okay. professional show. It was paid. And like, if you look at Live at the Apollo now, all of the new acts on there all played there back back there back in the day. And and it oh. was great fun. And at AFC Wimbledon, we were putting on shows, and that the, the one in the Grove in South Wimbledon was a free show, and but we were also putting on professional shows like ten, fifteen pound a ticket for get and getting TV comedians there. Mm. So I was from nothing, from no connection in comedy really, apart from an interest in it. I'm suddenly running two two different clubs, and um, and that was just great fun. I just fell in love with comedy. I fell in love with the sort of people that I met doing comedy. And I want, and I was a big comedy fan already, and started writing jokes and and MCing occasionally. But I, I usually got professionals to do it, so I just sat mm -hmm. there watching 
professionals over a five or six year period. So by the end of that, I, I'd done probably 100 gigs on my own right and developed this character as, as far as it is now, really. I don't think it's really developed that much since then. But <laughs> I've, I've just got better at comedy. So, yeah, I've been messing around since since 2004 really um and i love it i still i, I still get the buzz off it I, I i did a gig last friday my first one back on a stage in front of an audience and yeah, i just since, I since uh, night since 2020 i guess since 20 yeah, yeah since yeah I, i did one in 2020 in 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 one of the brief uh, oh yeah before the, before the lockdowns yeah in, I, in, I, in, I, in this 24 hours space of time before the lockdown Well, that was it. Basically, in, in the week before they locked us down properly, I, I managed to get a gig in. And um, and that was my last gig before last Friday, um, which was just a total joy um, to get back on the stage. And I didn't make any mistakes. And, and I remembered everything. And I was absolutely delighted. And, and I got a lot of laughs, considering like how offensive I can be and, and was. Okay. It went really well. I, I think you do you think um, the people um, appreciate a comedy live comedy much more than the, because of the pandemic. I don't know. It's difficult to say. I'm hoping so. I think that what you'll do is you'll get the occasional comic uh, comedy fan will probably be more than an occasional. I'm not sure it will attract new people. I don't know. That'll be interesting to see. I think that's one of the things that that is is yet to be learned about the how the. Um, how it's affected it i don't you know and all the big clubs are only allowing a, a third of the audience in aren't they anyway or half the audience in so yeah, yeah it's yeah. very it's difficult like half, half whistle whatever you call it i mean, Just, I, i've heard yeah. i've heard a lot of people were playing to nobody in brighton in in over the brighton fringe i've heard there's a lot of bad crowds there um But so I, it's very difficult to say, and it's normally very well supported. The Brighton Fringe, and it hasn't yeah, been. Yeah, so. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think there'll be as many people scared of going out still as there are people dying to go out. Yeah, yeah, true. That's true. You know, it's always. Uh, uh, I mean, because it's like we don't really know what's going to happen. Obviously, uh, you know, I don't want to turn this podcast into the the the. the the covid podcast <laughs> obviously yeah. i i so i want to ask you i want to carry on talking about covid but uh, what is interesting is what int interests me is uh, basically uh, how um, how the comedy um, scene uh, will react to that and obviously are they go uh, are, are they going to like comedians and are they going to survive you know what i mean because obviously uh, the pandemic has 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 stopped uh, many careers uh, many comedians careers you know to to you know to to develop so i guess many comedians actually many of them actually just given up on comedy and uh, you know i'm sure uh, uh, you know what i mean yeah I, i i just can't imagine i can't imagine walking away from comedy to be honest i just can't imagine it i mean I, i've already decided that i'm probably not going to get on telly but even if i was only okay. an open mic Even if I was only an open mic comic, I think I would still carry on. I see. Um, it's, it's in your blood, I guess, then. I it's believe so, blood. yeah. I've always been a big fan. I, I, I saw... I saw some really big comedians as a kid and uh, as a young man, and um, and I've just always loved it. I mean, it's always been a hobby alongside music and football for me. Mm, okay, okay. Well, well I, I was about to ask you what else is in your blood, but you just mentioned music. Well, yeah, I'm an old punk rocker. Um, I, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I was 14 in 77 and I got oh, my first Sam album, my first Clash album, my first Buzzcocks album. And mm -hmm. um, and I and I basically I'm a, I'm a melodic punk rocker, you know, I, I'm not so much the thrash stuff. Okay, but... okay, I, I I think I know what you mean. Basically, you are a bit of a, let's say probably more the Clash than uh, than uh, let's say than Sex Pistols. Yeah, definitely more Clash than Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols were just hype anyway. They did a, they did a, I mean, the, the the album Nevermind the Bollocks was absolutely fantastic, but it was all hype and 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 bluster. And and they were a, a boy band. They were basically put together by a manager. 
Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, it's like it's like nowadays One Direction, right? They're just uh, yeah. manufacturers. <laughs> it's not a group, not a group of kids who practiced in a garage when they were younger, and then you know, sort of, you know, like most most bands are, um, yeah. just group of musicians all meet or whatever. Um, no, they they were put together. So I was never really into them even at the time. Although I did, I I do love the album, and it, it's a seminal timepiece. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's um, you know they are a pop band. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I mean I'm not uh, obviously expert on 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 punk rock. However, I do know um, um, the uh, like Sex Pistols album we are talking about, and also I am quite a big fan of 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 the Clash in a way that I actually um, you know I've actually been a fan of of their album. Well. I, I don't remember the name of the album. That means I was a big, very big fan of. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean the one, you know, the one with the London Calling. So probably was called London Calling, right? That's exactly um, it. it. Was called London Calling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know, to be honest with you, the Clash were they kind of survived in a way of uh, the their music is is uh, you know it's not is 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 better I guess uh, than than Sex Pistols in a way that they had. Mm, they, their songs are, let's say, more mel melodic and more, uh, more like I don't know. They they just sounds nicer, like the Clash songs. I think, you know? I think they're more street. I think they're more street. I mean, I, I I went to a party a couple of weeks ago, and and it was pretty much a a drum and bass party. But huh. in the evening, on two or three occasions, they played the Clash. Oh wow! Okay. And, 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 and so it's they're much more street, you know. They got a lot more credibility um, uh, through the generations than the Sex Pistols ever did. Yeah, and if you think about songs, I, I don't know. You probably remember the song if you, you know, if you if you are a fan, if you if you are a punk rocker, um, uh, lost in a lost in a supermarket. Do you know this? Yeah. Do, do you remember the song? Uh, yeah, I mean, I this is probably one my my favorite song by the Clash. It's just like this how have this nice, you know, nice kind of innocent kind of vibe you know and uh, always when i am in supermarket i always it always pops to my head <laughs> <laughs> for some reason but you know uh, so yeah the clash is you no know, it's, uh, it's definitely um less aggressive than you know than than uh, than than sex pieces but like you said probably you know it, this aggression was was manufactured uh, like like yeah. you like like you you probably you will, that's what you probably want to uh, want to want to say um, yeah, that's just more street, mm -hmm. you know. They're, they're a street band, you know. They, they they literally were a group of mates who grew up together. Yeah, yeah. It was more natural, natural way of of uh, you know of getting getting uh, together. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, so basically, uh, you are not giving up on comedy. That's what you're saying. And not, no, <laughs> you're not giving up on comedy. Uh, pan the pandemic didn't uh, hasn't put you off. As uh, as I can can hear, it is quite opposite. You probably more than. But but are you going to like uh, you know focus on on performing, or you you rather you are still uh, the guy who prefers you know like promoting, uh, make um, you know cre uh, like um, um, do making uh, live uh, comedy, doing live comedy shows, like uh, behind being behind the uh, the whole you know the process than actually performing on stage. I know, I'm 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 not going to promote another night unless I get the perfect venue. I'm not going to promote another night for for general comedians. But mm -hmm. then my promotion will be for my show, Wrong Comedy. It's a show that I've done uh, two hundred over two hundred shows at Edinburgh Fringe with, and over three hundred shows overall. It's an offensive comedy show, and I'm currently looking at places to put that on around the country at football clubs and a couple of theatres and I'm basically going to hire some places and try and sell tickets for wrong comedy which is an out and out offensive comedy show there is a market for it I've proved it <laughs> and, and and you know and and this it it says all over the posters, you know, it's not for the easily offended. So anyone who comes in and gets offended is an idiot and, and, and they deserve to be offended. So yeah. it literally says all over the posters, um, not for the easily offended, 10 most controversial shows, Edinburgh Fringe, which it which it was. Um, and... And I'm 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 only really going to do that. I want to I want to perform in other people's uh, mainstream shows, but um, 
you know, I am a bit much for a, for a lot of the places. I, I, I get you a, a lot of big um, promoters use me. Um, a lot of big agents will use me for some types of gigs where I'm the right comedian, you know, like mm-hmm. football clubs, rugby clubs, rough, drunken okay. places. I do really well in those places. They're perfect for me. Okay, okay. So, so you like, uh, you know, you, you there is still market for for um, um, controversial uh, comedy or yeah. offensive. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's 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 it, obviously it's obvious. <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to ask you is, uh, uh, like, I mean, I never actually understood um, the uh, being being uh, be, being offen- offended by 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 a joke. You know why? Because because like this is a joke, right? So this is like. In nature, it's actually it's 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 just a story. It's just a joke, yeah. Yeah. So so it's even if it's offensive, it doesn't really mean that you mean to offend someone because you perform in this this joke. It's like it's not that's not what you th- what you like think uh, necessarily. It just that's like performing right it's like actor performing the role yeah you are performing some i don't know you say in things what uh, what actually people think uh, for example it doesn't have to be really your opinion on things i guess you know no, i mean that's exactly it i mean people can take offense if they want i mean it's really they're taking it i'm not giving it uh, it, it it's a joke it's the story i mean if i I'm, i'm not saying i do do a joke about actually i do do a joke about rape but uh, um, <laughs> But, it, but it's a very funny one. Um, uh, and yeah. no, nobody actually gets raped in it. You know, this is, and people are getting offended on behalf of imaginary people. I've got, yeah, a whole exactly. imaginary, yeah. I've got a whole imaginary family that I abuse horribly. But they're imaginary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. If I, wrote, book, if I wrote it in a book and all those things actually happened in a book, it would be a book and no one would blink an eye. It would just be a book. Yeah. It was just the story of the book, but if it's a joke, there's got to be some other standard. I don't understand it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Yeah, it's, uh, that that is what I mean. And people who who come to see comedy, they should expect, you know, to 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 like, <laughs> you know, obviously you're not going to, you know, you're not going to uh, uh, to to uh, you know uh, Kate Middleton wedding. You you're going to a to a to a comedy comedy you know comedy uh, event. You know you can expect yeah. anything. You can expect you know you can expect uh, you know beer thrown over your head or you know it's like you 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 actually uh, uh, going to the comedy um, event. You actually accept that. You can be offended. You can be, you know, you can be actually abused. <laughs> Not maybe in a, you know, in a <laughs> yeah. abused in a way of 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 again in a in a in a jokey way. You know, let's say being being you know being uh, let's say uh, called a, a prick or you know or uh, you know or you, you have to take it and you have to accept that. If you go to comedy uh, just thinking I'm I'm the queen of England, you can't touch me. Then you know. Yeah. Apologies for for mentioning you know the royal family. It's just an example, just just for the record, <laughs> in case people may call me okay, uh, an anti-monarchist or something. No, I'm absolutely not. I'm sort of the opposite of that. <laughs> oh, so I, you I, actually, I you're actually, don't, uh, you don't mind, uh, yeah. I don't feel any jokes about real people. That's that's my own rule. Um, I'm an offensive comedian, so I, what I do is I invent people to be offensive about. I, I don't want to be offensive to real people. That that would be less useful to me. That's not really what I'm laughing at, or you know what I'm trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite an interesting one. I, I had a group of um, sort of some fairly radical lesbians came to my gig to complain a couple of years ago in 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 Edinburgh yeah. and and they actually really enjoyed the show and and I was speaking to them afterwards and they said well we sort of get it that you're yeah. the idiot the the material is they it certainly is misogynistic but mm-hmm. actually I'm making myself out to be the idiot for not understanding women so actually the jokes on me oh and, I see. and they got that and they stayed out with us and drunk got drunk with me all night oh wow Okay, that's that's a nice story. I mean, nice. The story say uh, telling a lot about you know about about the um, the comedy as a as as art, you know, because obviously they realize that you are actually a nice bloke. A bloke is just you know you just uh, performing, you know. I guess, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, mm-hmm. it's the eternal joke of men not understanding women. I mean, that joke is got is going to last forever. 
and 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 uh, you know I think that that's worthy of of um, of a joke. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Just yeah. that men men really don't understand women. <laughs> well, that's probably true. That, I think that that that's true. That's not even a. Uh... Uh, that's not even a, that's not even a joke. <laughs> yeah, it, it got that based in the but I'm glad they got that. That actually cheered me up quite a lot that they uh, that they got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like I said, if uh, um, if you take a um, co comedian as a, you know, I mean, the thing is, performing is an art, right? Like, uh, it's that's my opinion. So if you, I mean, I am I'm actually I have performed. Uh, uh, it's not like I, I I I'm talking about things I never I never I never been through. You know, I actually I am not performing at the moment because obviously, uh, like after COVID, I'm kind of you know feeling like it's not not really. Um, it's like it's it's not really up up uh, up my street, I would say. But uh, what I want to say is, uh, you know, it's like performing is an, is an art. So you can't expect from someone, let's say, if if there's an actor who plays a murder murderer, right? Yeah. It doesn't really mean that he's a murderer, right? So if you meet him, it doesn't really mean that he's going to slice you up, you know, or 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 kill you. Yeah. Or raping, you know. So, so what I want to say is, what I want to say is basically that if you perform, if you if you if you perform it on stage and you say things that, which are offensive, it doesn't really mean that you are that kind of person. It's your, like, it's your, it's your um, uh, what you call it? It's your like stage image, right? Or stage what you call it? Stage, uh, yeah, stage image or whatever. Yeah, I think some stage some. Person. some some blokes are a bit disappointed sometimes when they meet me afterwards that I'm not that shouty, Larry bloke who's on, who they've just seen on stage. Um, I, I quite often get people saying, oh, you're quite quiet, aren't you? And you're, you're quite clever, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I sort of am. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's what you've seen as a character, mate. I, I, hope, I thought that you might have got that because um, nobody could be as ridiculous as my, real, as my character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I can imagine. You know, I actually I've I've seen uh, um, um, like live. Obviously, no, it wasn't a show. It was I'm talking about um, like uh, it was some kind of uh, like a TV appearance or some. Uh, he, um, I'm talking about Russell Howard, right? Yeah. And yeah. I saw him, let's say, living a uh, like a TV studio because he had like interview. It was, I think, it was breakfast. No, it was Sunday brunch on ITV or whatever. Uh, yeah. Sunday brunch. And basically, I've been there. Like uh, my colleague, my friend said, oh, "Let's go." He he's there. You know? But I didn't obviously. I didn't take a picture because I, uh, you know, it's like I wasn't really like I was like it. It wasn't right time. But basically, what I want to say is, I saw him. Let's say talking to people and giving giving away like uh, signing autographs and he's so like shy so quiet so so different than he's on stage honestly i, I was shocked i was shocked that someone yeah. as exploding as him you know like as you know as energetic and so entertaining could be so yeah. boring in a, in a real life like you're talking to fans like I, I was shocked i was shocked i mean i can say that because obviously i'm not lying so it's not like i'm making up the story uh, yeah. You know. I, anyway, uh, you know, Russell. He won't. He won't. <laughs> he won't listen to our podcast. And so, <laughs> no. But you know, I, it's true. And it's not about Russell. It's about like anyone. You know. It's like yeah. this. This is just your. You know. Your. 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 Obviously, there's some people I guess who are actually same as on stage. You know, uh, uh, off stage. I'm sure they are. Do you know any any of the comedians like? Uh, 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 I always I always say to people when that 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 say that um, like oh, I'm a comedian now, oh, but you're but you haven't been funny. I say uh -huh. like what you got to realise about a comedian if a comedian was at a party, he's not the bloke in the middle of the room that everyone's around listening to. He, he's not the bloke who's the life and soul of the party. He's got his back to the wall. He's probably in the kitchen and he's listening <laughs> to everything everyone's saying. That, that, Comedian, he's not. He's not the life and soul of the party ever. <laughs> yeah, isn't isn't it strange? Actually, isn't it like really ridiculous? Like that 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 you know this character is so artificial in a way. Well, yeah. I mean, it. I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure that 
you know, from most comedians I know, if they went up on the stage and, and they were themselves, I don't think that... I mean, there are a few comedians, people like Lenny Sherman and Wilson, who, who are naturally funny in real life. Mm, okay. You know, they're just, they're just funny people. They would have been funny at school, you know. Um, I I wasn't at all. Well, I think I'm 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 the majority. I'm part of the majority in comedy that wasn't. <laughs> okay, I would say I would say um um you know um like uh, there is probably um yeah there's not 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 probably too many but I get what you're saying. It's like there's some some people some some comedians who actually. Uh, whatever they do, let's say if they if they come on stage and improvise, they will still be yeah. be funny because obviously that's that's how they are. <laughs> so you know, uh, so um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, so um, let's uh, before we um, before we with before we finish, uh, let me ask about music then because you mentioned that you 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 oh well we we talked about music anyway uh, you 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 told me you are a punk rocker uh, what about let's say uh, music nowadays how would you how would you rate it <laughs> I, i like i like i like a, a few bands but they're not bands that are making it into the charts i i watch a lot of live music um, okay. um my other job is i work i've been working in music pubs for the last Well, since I got back to London in 2004, oh. actually, and, and most of my career before that, I've been a pub manager and a, and a bar manager. And, and most of the place, a lot of the places I've um, worked and run have been music places. Um, so I've, I've always pretty much been involved in music. And my favourite bands at the moment are... Are, are, are small pub bands or there's only there's a new band the skinner brothers who who's a young man that, who's led by a young man that i worked with a few years ago okay. um, and i taught him how to be a barman but he's now he's now getting onto radio six and 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 they're really starting to sell out shows and and they're yeah. doing really well and i think they're going to be really big skinner brothers okay, okay. Um, i think I, they're yeah, a little I, bit I, like I, sort of oasis -y, um but a, a, a lot more street than that um and <laughs> a, a bit better i don't know <laughs> and um and yeah tom tom moody and uh Uh, and his new band that you know they're 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 a punk band they're they're loud and aggressive and brilliant live I, I, the most of the bands that i'm really into now I, i go and watch live in pubs okay okay so it's um it's not it's not really uh let's say you you like the bands which are like like a real i mean in a way that real yeah. instruments I, i guess what about i guess you you're not you're not a fan of uh let's computer music you know Amazing. Well, I, I, don't, I don't mind dance music if I'm off my head in a nightclub, yeah. but um, I wouldn't listen to it at home. Okay, uh, I see. It's like a kind of... I'm uh, not a yeah. snob about music. I, I try not to be a snob about music, but I, I, I don't like, you know, silly pop music and manufacturing yeah. bands. That's what I'm trying to find out, because obviously um, my first impression was like, oh, because you are a punk rocker, you probably, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call it... Uh, Um, just not, maybe not hating, but uh, just kind of despise of 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 new music. But you know, uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, like you said, there's uh, there, there there are bands or there, there's uh, music which is worth or worthy of of checking out, uh, even yeah, even in 2021. From the last five years, there's a band called Idols, I D L E S. Um, that that okay. is very much. They are very much my sort of thing, and they they they're touring the world um, consistently. I mean, obviously, apart from COVID, um, <laughs> they've, been, they've been touring the world. You know, selling out shows all over the world for the last sort of four or five years. And now I consider them to be a fantastic band and a band that's right up there with my all-time favorites. But I'm also a fan of Coldplay, which really annoys a lot of people. And I see. Um, Their first two albums were just magnificent. I yes, don't like I agree. I do agree. I do agree on that. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very same uh, because obviously now what they do is basically mainstream music, which is not really, it's not, it's not the best. Let's be honest. No, no, it's, they, they, they definitely like should have died at 27, like most of, yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do agree on that. I, I, I've been a big fan of of Coldplay. You know, the the first albums, like you said, par parachutes, parachutes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. 
I can't think of the other one myself yeah. off the top of mm-hmm. my head. But yeah, no, the, those two albums are works of art. I actually played them. I, I, I played them after I'd smoked a couple of joints the other day. And <laughs> it was absolutely, I was pinned to the pin to the wall. It was wonderful. I hadn't heard them for ages, and yeah, and yeah, yeah. I really considered them. Um, I also like a lot of sixties music because um, I, I actually was a child in the sixties. I was born in sixty two. Oh, okay, um, okay. And uh, I've got a lot of older brothers, and so I was listening to to the Kinks and 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 the Beatles oh, and wow. those in the sixties. So you know, and a lot of um, soul music as well. Um, a lot of a lot of Tamla Motown music. So you've been you've been uh, you know you've been uh, let's say well winded uh, through the whole uh, the whole music history, I guess you know through the Beatles, uh, you know, then uh, like uh, 70s punk era, then uh, discos, I guess, or dance music. And, and the indie scene that went afterwards with bands like Echo and the Bunnymen and uh, Joy yeah. Division. Um, you know, the the early 80s uh, scene as well. I was obviously already an adult by that time. Um, and I very much like that. I mean, Echo and the Bunnymen are like their first two albums are probably two two in my top five albums of all time. Oh, wow. uh, and Joy Division have, have probably got another couple of those top five albums of all time. So <laughs> well, yeah. well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. You have you have at least eight albums in your top five. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> oh no, I've got about 140 in my top five. Depends what day it is. <laughs> I see. Uh, I am. Uh, I mean, uh, well, I mean that could come as a surprise because obviously you may think that I am a young, 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 young man. But I am not actually, but it may come as a surprise. I'm actually a big fan of Caravan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think yeah, from seventies, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, hippies really. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. Big fan. They. They have really good stuff. They have really, you know, really. Uh, let's say original music and and still you know still um uh, still you know still uh, tangible i mean at least uh, you know at least speaks up, to my um, it holds up doesn't it it holds up I, some some music doesn't doesn't uh, travel well through time and it's very much of, of its era but actually caravan are really good yeah and uh, probably because you know uh, when i i grew up in poland basically uh, on the radio they were playing you know there was uh, shows where actually they were playing english english music like like you know all like 70s 80s so that's where i where i learned about like pink floyd caravan you know all of this kind of led zeppelin so so like what i mean is uh, i know this music even like from poland is you know what i mean it's like it's yeah. not I just came here and learned what is it. It's that's how that's how influential they are. Even people who live somewhere, you know, in the remote countries like Poland. <laughs> Poland well, actually, you know, most, can... of the Pol- most of the Polish people I know um, are, are actually into the same sort of music as me. But that's how I know them because I, I go to the same places as they as they do, and okay. um, you know they they're exactly they are they are me. You know they like their music live. They like to have a few drinks. They like they you know they're not frightened and to uh, get involved in in illegals and yeah. and and you know they're party animals i mean these are some of my best party mates um yeah. and the, the polish people i know were already into that before they got here but that is probably the reason they came to london yeah 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 and obviously like uh, music education from poland like i said in poland like uh, um, radio can actually uh, you know sh- sh- like s- can sh- really educate you on uh, on english like culture or even english music you know like uh, that that's probably a good thing because obviously uh, it's it's it 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 actually connects Pol- Polish people with English people, let's say if Polish people come here, come to here, they have some kind of ideas about, let's list, English culture, English music, you know, they know the Beatles, they know the, you know, they know Led Zeppelin, it's like, they, they, they it's the same culture, it's not like, you know, someone who's coming from, no offense, from like India, for example, and they yeah. just never heard of the Beatles, for example, or let alone William Shakespeare, <laughs> but, you yeah. know, no offense yeah. again, because, you know, obviously, you know, uh, no, I mean, it's, you're, you're stating facts there, aren't you, really? I mean, there's obviously going to be an exception to the rule in a country that size, but yeah, yeah exactly. I, I think that's a fair generalisation. Yeah, that's what uh, I mean. Okay, Bob. I mean, I think um, yeah, I'm 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 very grateful that you have found time to you know to speak to me. Obviously, this is this is a new project. I mean, like a like prop like you know the second actually proper let's say uh, chat 
a podcast on uh, YouTube, uh, you know, on 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 uh, on YouTube. So so you know, I'm uh, I'm definitely. You had my very good friend Ashley Hayden. He, he's 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 one of the people in comedy I I would spend time with outside of comedy. Oh, okay, that's that's nice. Yeah. I didn't know your your friends. Yeah, he was fast because I've done a uh, like a um, online interview with him, like uh, you know, on the blog interview a couple of years ago. So he was more than happy to you know to to actually to join me. Uh, but obviously, you know, like like I said now you you kind of uh, you know you said yes that means you know that means uh, that means a lot because obviously my my podcast can can grow you know so i i do appreciate it and you know and um, yeah i mean thanks for your time bob and uh, if you hashtag afc wimbledon um because i'm reasonably yeah. well known there uh, you might get a few extra listens um okay and, and and bob walshy walsh you never know. You you might you might it might catch a few people's um, okay. attention. And please put it up on my 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 Facebook wall. Yeah, I will, I will. I will. I will tag you. And also, uh, have you mentioned AFC Wimbledon? Is that the the, the stadium where, where now uh, Chelsea women or ladies playing? No, uh, no, no. We've we we're the only reason that we've sold it to them because oh. we've built a new ground in. Oh, I see. I see. I get it. Because I actually worked as a steward for for Chelsea Ladies Stadium. Uh, I mean, the Chelsea Ladies in uh, was that in Kingston? Yes, it was. I, I was actually born. I was actually born a few hundred yards from there. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's that's nice too. Yeah. So you're talking about uh, the the new Wimbledon Stadium? Yeah. Well, we we built a stadium in Wimbledon in in one of the most expensive parts in the world. We 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 built it. We're still fan owned. We're we're owned by our supporters. We don't have a millionaire sub, uh, owner. Mm -hmm. We're a support, we're a supporters owned club, and we managed to build a, a, a nearly ten thousand seat a stadium in Wimbledon, which is incredible. Wow. And. And next season will be our first season there, and I am a season ticket holder. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that that's hopefully you know. Let's let's you know. Let's hopefully you know the 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 the, the COVID will fuck off, <laughs> and you know everything yeah. will be will be will be as great as it used to be. So. Well, Covid sort of has fucked off, but unfortunately, the government are not going to let go of this power they've got. True, 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 true. But you know, hopefully, it will, it will, it will die off uh, somehow uh, with it, the help of. It will of... come back next winter. It will come back next winter, but I don't think the country will want to go into a lockdown again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, I'm, 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 I'm on the same, on the same uh, boat. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, okay, Bob. I, I I'm really pleased that you, nice you, you found the time, and yeah, um, you know, uh, take care, and hopefully uh, we can speak uh, at some point in the future again. Okay, that would be really good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, be nice thanks, to thanks. That was nice. Time, nice and, chat. and don't give up comedy, man. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'll, um, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mate. Well, that's been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Okay, same here. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.